What's going on guys? I'm Chase and this is episode 10 of Building the Ultimate Motorcycle Garage, the series where I take you guys along as I transform our regular renter's garage and I make it into what I believe is the ultimate motorcycle garage. Some of you guys are starting to call it a man cave, whatever you want to call it. That is what I am currently creating. This is technically the last episode, but it's okay. Let's roll the intro. So guys, in this episode, what I planned on doing was all the finishing projects I needed to get to the garage to its final state so that in the next episode, technically, I can do a walkthrough and the entire thing will be done. That being said, we've got a couple things I want to knock out today. So to be fair, you guys told me that I'm going to want to take those things off. And you know what? You were totally right. Uh, me and Heather were talking about it the other day. So all these lights have a little pull tab at the very top that connects to a longer string, not a string, but whatever this little bead area stuff is. And I can take off the majority of that and still have access to a very little pull string. So what I gotta do is take all of those off first. So you guys can probably see, this is what I was talking about. It's this little string part connects right here on that. So another reason that I'm happy I did that was you can see uh, these are above the garage door and if I open the garage, the garage actually opens up and hides these lights. And one of the things that was happening is these little cables were getting, were touching the garage. Now, they never ripped a light down or anything. Knowing my luck, I'm like, dude, one day, it's just gonna snag it perfect and it's gonna rip all the lights out. So that totally eliminates that problem. Open that garage door, didn't touch them. Next thing. All right, so guys, the so next up is modifying the gear rack. And if you guys see behind me, that is the motorcycle gear rack that I built with my hands. I'm not sure what episode that was in, but you can check in the description. They'll have a uh, series guide for all of the episodes. So I hand built that thing and let me just show you. It's not the most stable thing. So with that in mind and based on some of the comments I got from you guys, I've decided to take the top off and modify it to make it a helmet rack. Because a lot of you guys are saying, that's an awesome rack, but it can't hold helmets, so it can't even hold everything that a motorcyclist would need. That is a very good point, and it's something I was thinking about towards the end of the build. I was like, wait, it, it's too tall, I can't even use it. I'm gonna modify it so that way it can hold helmets and it doesn't have that giant top part. Alright guys, so now that we got the top off, the back side is what we're looking at now. The modification for that is not any big deal. I've got a 3 4 black steel 48 inch pipe and all I'm going to do is bend the ends down and I'm going to connect them over in the top. It's not going to be anything fancy. I could hang stuff on it if I want, but this is going to be against the wall. I don't plan on using it a lot. The front is where we're going to do some interesting stuff. way harder than I expected it to be. I don't know why. Uh, these things helped though. Okay, uh, that's done. All right guys, so as you can see, I've got my little drawing here and what we're gonna do, instead of doing a 48 inch bar all the way across, we're gonna do 10 inch bars with some T's, some J's and all this kind of crazy stuff. I'm gonna build it here and then I'm gonna spray paint it black before we can get it put into the thing. Now you guys 
guys are gonna ask, I'm not removing the stickers because I'm gonna paint over this thing anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go get this painted, and then we're gonna move on and we'll come back to it once it gets done drying. When I was doing the helmet rack here on the wall, a lot of you guys were talking about put caps on the inside, I'll show you. So these guys on the inside don't have anything at the top, it's just this threaded uh, situation. So the reason I didn't do caps is because my local Home Depot place ran out of caps. Well, luckily, the Home Depot place now has caps and I got caps for all of them. So I'm gonna get caps on all of these guys so it doesn't interfere with the inside of the helmet. Even if it did, most of the helmets you see on here aren't wearable. I've wrecked in them or I've gone down in them in some way where I don't wanna wear them anymore. They're kind of more of a display helmet now. So I'm not too worried about it. Still gonna put caps on them regardless though. helmets are fixed. I think I saw a lot of comments were about were about you should use one of these plates to hold the helmets up that way they can uh, stay off the wall. Well I can do it like I want. You guys can see with these helmets they're sticking off the wall and if we go over here you can see these helmets are sticking off the wall as well. It's all about like how you place the helmet on the hook but the way I have them you can do like you can see now so there's no use for using one of these big plates because then you're gonna have a hard time getting the helmet on and off. These work really fine. All right, next thing. All right, so another thing we learned with the gear rack is these shelves are not stable. Luckily, I have one of these holes and we're gonna make it stable. Okay, so you see how we have rods here? Well, these are gonna connect into those rods and then as you can see, this is gonna fit perfectly across using this pipe. So as you guys can see, this is essentially what it's gonna be like. There's gonna be a pipe coming out of here. It's gonna come down and it should connect pretty closely to these screws. That one will fit right in. I might have to do a slight modification with the screws, but as far as like stuff to do to make this work, I like that's gonna be easy peasy lemon squeezy. And uh, once this is done, I'll have a really good handle right here to move this uh, entire cart back and forth. So right now you can see all these wires that run down the side of the table, which work fine, whatever, but I can't stand the wire look. And what I'm thinking of doing is drilling a hole straight through the middle of the table, then run the wires over here from underneath, then run them down. The thing that works out really cool is this guy has this little opening for the normal cable to run out, but what I could use it for is to run this little cable inside, then down the big hole. The problem is drilling the hole and big enough to fit all the stuff. We're gonna need tools. <laughs> Also something very interesting is I don't know how to drill a big enough hole to fit all the stuff in. So I'm just gonna drill multiple holes until the hole's big enough. So I'm gonna like drill circular holes. I don't know, we'll find out. Uh, that's about right. Is that right? Yeah, why not? The biggest thing is this. So if that's the center and I drill here,
Okay, now I've got that. So far that's what I've got. It's just holes. I'm gonna keep drilling and uh, eventually, hopefully it'll fall out. This might be cause for a Dremel. It smells like burnt wood. Oh, it says metal. Okay, so I know this is made for metal. I don't have one made for wood, so this is what's gonna have to work. You guys see the smoke? <laughs> the table's smoking. Oh, Jesus. All right, we're upgrading to the, um, the sander now because I, I might catch this thing on fire. This is going to be sketch, but oh, what isn't? Quick PSA, kids. I know what I'm doing is wrong. It's all I have to do what I'm trying to do. And I'm not gonna go to the store and buy anything new. So I don't need comments of you're doing it wrong because I really don't care. I just hope I don't burn the house down. Okay, we're gonna continue. I'll tell you one thing, man. This is the smoothest burnt wood I've ever seen. So we weren't making much headway, but then I realized I've got this little thing and I can probably stick it. Yeah, it'll fit all the way in. So what I'll do is I'll use that to open the hole up in the middle and then that way I can get in one of the bigger ones. We're slowly getting there. Can this guy fit in yet? No, shit. We're now big enough to put the other one in so I can take this burnt end off. There's a baby drill. Oh, hell yeah, there's a baby drill. <laughs> Look at that, I'm, I like burnt the end off. <laughs> Massive destruction is happening right now. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. Freaking hole, oh my God, that took so long. Now we gotta smooth it out. All of that work now to find out if the hell would have thought making this hole was so damn hard good god look at that so much better holy cow This little tab is just holding the wires there. And then I think what I'll do is I'll just zip tie them down here at the bottom. I think I'm gonna also use these down here to uh, clean these wires up whenever I get the computer hooked up. That's gonna be next. So if you guys have ever custom built a PC, you know that moment where you've put everything together, everything hypothetically should work, but you haven't gotten confirmation on if it's gonna work yet. And there's that like feeling of like, 
Please work. That's the feeling I've got right now because I haven't turned this thing on for about four months. <laughs> Literally the thing I was talking about, like, you know what would be the worst case scenario? Yeah, that's what's happening. <laughs> All right, I've double checked all the cords. Uh, hey. Okay, I guess, uh, I guess there was just a cord that was loose. Hey Amen, man, that's pretty cool. My workbench and I can just like pull the keyboard out. I've got the uh, wireless MX, what is this, MX Master? Yeah, I've got the wireless MX Master mouse, so that way there's no cables for that. I'll probably eventually get a wireless keyboard and that way I'll have full wirelessness. But uh, for now, for that being a little workstation on the workbench, that's not bad. All right guys, so we've got the black helmet holding rack. Now it's still wet in some places. It's like raining outside and this thing is just not drying. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and install with it being a little wet and then hopefully that doesn't get over me too much. So hopefully this fits. <laughs> Earlier I went to Home Depot and I got one of these T's and I don't know if you guys can read it, but it's actually not the same size. It's three fourths, three fourths and a half. I got really pissed off earlier because I had to go to Home Depot like four times, but this might have just saved my butt. Uh, that's not going to happen today. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that will work a little better. Let's try it. <laughs> Uh, what we're going to have to do is unscrew these guys so we can figure out if those holes are going to work. Nailed it. Alright, so what I'm looking for now is if these will fit on top of each other. And there's no way in hell they're going to. Guys, I hate to say it, but I think this is going to have to be a day two situation between the piping and now I need screws to make these work. It's just not looking good. Um, I will see you guys on day two of doing this stuff and I'm gonna go be frustrated. Here's day two. What's going on guys and welcome to day two of this episode. I'm not gonna lie guys, I left you yesterday a defeated man and for many reasons I had gone to Home Depot many times to get all types of pipes and nuts and just had many failures yesterday, but I can happily say I come back to you as a well-rested man and I will now finish this video with positivity and awesome. First, we're gonna make the damn helmet holder. I have found a way to make this thing fit on the other side. Like I said, it's not perfect, but you know what? That works. So guys, with this, I was doing some research on what's the best way to do this, because I was checking this out, and if you pull these together, they don't fit. So, what I think I'm gonna do is take this entire area apart and build it from the top down. I'm gonna have to re-screw screws, put new screws in. I've got all the screws I need. actually worked. So now I've got the bars here. Wow, this whole thing, like literally the entire thing is more stable now. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Oh, there was this thing I never showed you guys that's been sitting in the side of the garage and I got it if I ever needed to work on my supermoto. I'll just show you. I 
I got a 1,500 pound jack. So I tried to roll the uh, gear rack out of the garage so I could spray paint the top of it and uh, it won't fit. What I'm gonna do is plug a fan up, blow the air that way, and I'm just gonna have to spray paint it in here and leave the garage open for a little while so that it can air out. That's all I got. <sighs> letting that dry for a while because I don't want to be touching that but in the meantime I can move it back and uh, we can finish this video up And guys, with that, I think I'm gonna call episode 10 of the Ultimate Motorcycle Garage done, along with the garage. Uh, don't worry, I know you guys haven't seen every nook and cranny. I'm gonna save that for Friday's video. I'm gonna do a big walkthrough and show you guys every little piece of the garage. But as you're looking at it now, I'm I'm thinking it's uh, it's done. Obviously, I'm gonna do episodes like way down the road where I update this or update that. I've got a couple friends that are gonna come over and do specific episodes that we're planning now. So that should be exciting. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode and this series because essentially it's done. Like there's gonna be no more planned episodes like all the guys that bought decals and all that kind of stuff. This is the end of it. I've still got the big art pieces that I'm getting made right now. So that will come in the future, but for now, that's it. If you guys like what you're looking at, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel if you want to see more videos in this garage. I really appreciate you guys that have stuck around this entire video and all the videos that I've done. Uh, you guys are what really runs this channel and my eternal gratitude to you guys. And yeah, I'm out of here guys. I'm Chase on Two Wheels. This has been the Ultimate Motorcycle Garage. I will see you on Friday for a walkthrough of the entire garage. And other than that, I'll see you guys on the next one. You guys ride safe. Later. Oh,